Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome the members of council, staff, and members of the public to our July 11th council meeting and call this meeting to order. I'd like to ask Mrs. Pearson, clerk operations clerk, please, to read the disclaimer. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And that is to note that uh, to councils, uh, council members, staff, guests, and members of the public, you are advised that the Council of the Town of Petroleum meetings are being video and audio recorded and will be posted to the Town of Petroleum's YouTube, along with the official written minutes on our website. As such, comments and opinions expressed may be published and any comments expressed by individual council members, guests, and the public are their own and do not represent the opinions or comments of the Town of Petroleum as a whole and or the Council of the Town of Petroleum. The recorded video of the full council meeting is not considered the official record of that meeting. The official record of the council meeting shall consist solely of the minutes approved by the council of the town of Petrolia. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. And at this time, I'd like to ask for the roll call, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Dighton. Present. Councillor Field. Councillor O'Hara. Present. Councillor Purdy. Present. Councillor Such. Present. Councillor Welton. Present. Mayor Loosely. Present. We have a quorum, Your Worship. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask council to declare a conflict of interest, either now or at the appropriate time, and to complete the necessary paperwork for the clerk. Seeing none, I'll move on to the adoption of the agenda before you tonight. I'll ask for a mover and a seconder to put that on the floor for discussion, please. Moved by Councillor Dighton, seconded by Councillor Welton. And your worship, we do have an amendment. Uh, item 16A uh, will be continued to be deferred until September 12th. Okay, thank you. So noted. All right, I'll ask you to read that motion to adopt the agenda, please. And that is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to adopt as amended the July 11th, 2022 regular meeting of Council agenda. Any discussion regarding the agenda before you tonight? If not, all those in favor of approving that motion, opposed, that motion carries. Next on our agenda item are the minutes of a previous meeting of council held on Monday, June the 27th. I'll ask for a move and a second to put those minutes on the floor for discussion. Moved by Councillor Purdy, seconded by Councillor O'Hara. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. And that is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to adopt as circulated minutes of the regular meeting of council held on June 27th, 2022. Any discussion regarding those minutes, errors or omissions? All those in favor of approving those minutes? Opposed, that motion carries. Thank you. We also have a review. We've got the minutes of a meeting of the public information session and open house for sidewalk connectivity held on June the 27th. I'll ask for a motion to bring that on the floor for discussion, please. Moved by Councillor Welton, seconded by Councillor Such. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. And that is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to receive and file as information the circulated meeting notes from the public information session and open house for sidewalk connectivity held on June 27th, 2022. Thank you. Any discussion regarding those minutes? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. And we also have the minutes of a public information session for the zoning bylaw amendment held on July 7th, 2022. I'll ask for a move and a second to put that uh, on the floor for discussion. Moved by Councillor Dighton, seconded by Councillor O'Hara. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. And that is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to adopt as circulated minutes of the zoning bylaw amendment public meeting held on July 7th, 2022. Any discussion regarding those minutes? All those in favor of approving those minutes? Opposed, that motion carries. That brings us to the inspirational message and I'll call upon Council Purdy, please. Thank you, Worship. Uh, a true leader has the competence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. Does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the equality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. And that's by Douglas MacArthur. Thank you, Councillor Purdy. That moves us to the round table announcements and we rotate that as council is aware. Tonight, we're starting with Councillor Such, please. Uh, your Worship, uh, I was at the, the Pizza Fest, and, uh, or the Art in the Park, sorry. And boy, was it well attended and I'd like to congratulate the people that put it together. They did a fine job. 
setting up to the barn van and then we'll start well. Good job. Thank you, Councillor Such, and I will be speaking to that as well later on. Councillor Purdy. Thank you, Worship. I'll just echo what Councillor Such said. Look like both yeah. events were well attended and it's nice to see, you know, we're back into in-person things again. And it's just really nice to see everybody's getting out and getting back to some sort of normalcy. It sure is. Thank you, Councillor Purdy. It's nice to see everybody out. The weather was great and it turned out fine. Councillor Field is away. Councillor Welton. Yes, Your Worship. I uh, attended the Art in the Park too, and I'd like to put out a big thank you to the staff and all the hard work they did, whoever was involved in that. It was a great turnout. I mean, it was awesome. Thank you, Councillor Welton. It certainly was, and I'll be speaking to that again later on as well. Councillor Dighton. I attended a few of the uh, things on the weekend. Uh, I went to the farmer's market and uh, we were uh, adjacent at the uh, brewery for the uh, the music festival. Uh, it was a great time. A lot of people out there, good to see some faces back out there again. So well done. Thank you, Councillor Dighton. Councillor O'Hara. I have nothing at this time. Okay, thank you. I have just a short list tonight. I attended the Great West Auctions 35th anniversary owned by John and Missy Stevens on Wednesday, June 29th and presented a certificate on behalf of the town of Petrolia. It was a very nice event with a huge turnout. The Creative County Committee by way of a Zoom meeting held on Thursday, June 30th was canceled at the last minute due to a lack of a quorum, which was unfortunate. I took part in the Petrolia Canada Day celebrations on Friday, July 1st and would like to congratulate staff, the fire department, service clubs, sponsors, and all volunteers involved with the activities. And the fireworks were fantastic, which was great for our community and surrounding area. I attended the Blue Water Power Annual Meeting held on Thursday, June 30th at the Best Western Guildwood Hotel. It was a good meeting and was great news for the public and shareholders. And as council is aware, we received even more money than what we had budgeted for. I also attended the County Council meeting held on Wednesday, July 6th, and as usual, we'll keep Council informed. I took part in the AMO video for the town regarding asset management that also included a, included a video of the whole town. Special thanks to Mr. Rick Charlebois, CAO Dash Treasurer, Mrs. Larissa Ellsworth, Director of Arts and Communication, and Chris from AMO. And I will try and arrange a time for Council to see that video in the future. I'd like to congratulate Mrs. Carol Graham, chairperson of the uh, Art in the Park. Well, I want to also congratulate the staff, the volunteers, and those involved that took part in the Art in the Park last Friday and Saturday. It was another good event with a number of vendors and the weather was great. I would also like to congratulate the sponsors, staff, Optimus Club, the Barn Burners, and all the volunteers involved with the Barn Dance held on Saturday, July 9th. It was another great event and so nice to see everyone back out after COVID-19. That's all I have. At this time, it brings us to the correspondence. We have correspondence that is running from A to G, unless council wishes to pull any out separately. If not, I'll ask for a mover and a seconder to put that motion on the floor for discussion. Moved by Councillor Purdy, seconded by Councillor Dighton. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. And that is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to receive and file correspondence items 8A through G. Any discussion regarding any of those items? If not, all those in favor of approving that motion, oppose, that motion carries. That brings us to correspondence for consideration in motion. We have a letter from Mr. Matt Mueller, who has requested for a fee relief on July 11th uh, regarding a letter to town council in the tennis courts. And there is a motion before you. I'd like to ask for a move and a seconder to put that on the floor for discussion. Moved by Councillor Welton, seconded by Councillor Such. And I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. Uh, thank you. That is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to receive and file Mr. Mueller's request and that council request Mr. Mueller provide a funding update in relation to the funds raised as part of the Indoor Tennis Dome Initiative. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. Any questions regarding that request? If not, all those in favor of that motion? 
Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. And also we have the Lambton Group Police Services Board meeting request and funding allocation update. I'll ask for a move and a second to put that prepared motion before you for discussion. Moved by uh, Councillor O'Hara, seconded by Councillor Welton. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. And that is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to receive the correspondence from the Lambton Group Police Services Board, acknowledging the possible impact to the 2023 town budget and that council confirm participation in the proposed future meeting of the Lambton Group Police Services Board, Ontario Provincial Police, member municipalities and town administration. Any questions regarding that motion? Councillor O'Hara. I'm not concerned about the fact that uh... It's just basically asking for more money again. And, and I have a concern with that. You know, we pass budgets, we, we, we do things. I, I realize that they're asking for it, I guess, down the road, but um, there's got to be, uh, it's so much this year. How much more again the next year? Does it just increase, increase, increase? So I have a problem with it. Thank you, Councillor Harrop. I think uh, there's some good discussions that need to take place with the police service board, such as we have a contract already. And yes, we're gonna end up picking up that cost, whether we contribute or not, probably. Councillor Purdy. I believe some of the stuff's over COVID as well. Is it not? Some That's of, correct. Um, and, uh, and some of the cleaning costs. Yeah. Do they not know how to apply for provincial grants like we do? I'm not sure if they qualified for the ones like the ministry. Maybe our clerk could speak to that. To yeah, um, we actually had correspondence a couple of uh, weeks back. The province declined them. So this, the police services board, the way the model is set up, that the OPP cover all cleaning across all detachments. The Corona detachment is the only detachment that doesn't have that uh, as part of it. They did apply for provincial funding and we're told that municipalities were given the relief funding to please speak to your municipalities. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. I think the other concern is usually the wherever the uh, police, wherever they have their office, it's usually that municipality that contributes towards that. But again, I think the intent of this is to open it up for discussion. Councillor Such. I have a problem with the two. Um, they presented us with the budget. Um, it's the same as what the town does. We set up a budget and for us to follow. And you know what? Uh, that's what they did. I have a problem with giving anything. You know, they could sit down and look at their budget. Next time you come around, maybe they'll consider some of those extra costs and build it in. I have a problem with the budget. That's what we based our budget on. And that's what we should go by. Okay, thank you, Councillor Such. Any other comments or questions from Council? I did, yes, yeah. The motion's been read. I'll call the vote. All those in favor of approving this motion? Opposed? That motion is not carried. Okay, we'll move on now to delegations and presentations. We do not have any for tonight. So Your Worship, just for clarification, that motion turned down participation in an information meeting. That's correct. Okay. Is it, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's is that council's understanding. We're not going to do that. Okay. Thank you. All right. As I said, delegations and presentations, we have none tonight. For our community announcements and recognition awards, you have a list before you. I'll ask for a move and a second to put that on the floor for discussion. Moved by Councillor Dighton, seconded by Councillor Such. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. Uh, that is that the Council of Town of Petrolia receive as information the July 11th, 2022 community announcements as presented. Any questions from Council? Mrs. Ellsworth, do you have anything you'd like to add? Nothing at this time, Your Worship. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of approving that motion? Opposed? That motion's carried. This brings us to the first opportunity for the public to address council. And I'll ask if anyone would like to address council at this time. Certainly. Please state your name and address again for the record, please.
Allison Mavis, 4344 Street. Here I am again, sorry. Um, first off, I have a question about the minutes from the public information session. I asked Ms. Ellsworth if I was allowed to ask a question about that and when to do that. And she said this was the time to do so. Um, and my question is, why was it not included in the minutes that Ms. Deb Blackstock, who's right there, asked about the posting being placed at the corner of First Avenue Garden Crescent instead of on the property in question? I'll ask the clerk to respond to that, but I think the, again, the, uh, the minutes are taken by the clerk. They don't editorialize it. They just basically do the basic minutes, but I'll ask the clerk if she'd like to address that. Uh, correct. That is how legislation works. They're not verbatim minutes. Anyone wishing to submit anything as an attachment, uh, they're welcome to, and their attachment can be included in the minutes. Well, I just wonder, because it was included that Mr. Ritchie asked about why his address was not included on the mailing list, which directly referred to the list of, of for, the pro, for the planning act of all how it was supposed to be notified to the public. And this to me also directly references how the public was notified because it was flat out put on the wrong property. And I actually took a picture of it. It doesn't even have the planning number on the poster or on the sign that was put up. So why would that not be included in the minutes? I understand it's not verbatim. I just feel that that's an important point that should have been included. Okay, yeah, I mean, your point's well taken, that, uh, but uh, the council has already approved those minutes. So uh, unless council wants- Well, I'd wants... also like to know how Councillor Grant Purdy can approve minutes at a meeting he was not at. The council still has the authority to do that. They still get copies, but whether they're there or not, they still have the authority to, uh, to approve those minutes. Hmm. That's because they've had them and read those and they have the option to ask for amendments or changes. Okay, so it doesn't matter that the posting was done incorrectly, that it didn't follow the rules of the Planning Act. It's still, it's okay with what was done. My understanding is, and it was reported by the clerk that we did meet all the requirements regarding the posting. The clerk was under the impression that if it was posted on the actual property itself. It was during the meeting that the clerk was informed that it was not posted in the correct spot on the property. So that is only one element of posting your worship. There are five elements of posting. They all coordinate, yes. So it, they don't have, you don't have to meet all of them according to the planning up, you just have to meet most. You just have to provide notification to the public. Okay, so it's, sorry, this is new to me. So I'm just curious as to how things go. Um, another question, so the town planner is not here, but, in the town planner's report, he has this listing as a residential three. Yet the new application is for townhouse dwellings and semi-detached and two single, single detached dwellings. How is it possible that this is all residential three? Because in the town's bylaws, semi, single detached is residential one, semi-detached is residential two, and townhouse is residential three. So how is this all considered residential three? I think that, is that, um, was that a site specific? It's a site specific, your yeah. worship. Just, uh, yeah, so what, what I was just discussing with the clerk, it's a site specific for that purpose. So it's a special uh, zoning number, for, so to speak. So, but, but the key thing is it's a site specific. It's just for that. So it's basically what the developer wants is what the developer is getting on this property. Not necessarily. I still think the, uh, as the planner stated at the meeting, there's still a number of things in that report before he comes with the draft plan that he doesn't agree with and they will have to make those necessary changes to meet their requirements. Well, one of the things he stated that he's including a rear yardage of 10.5 meters and he, at the initial one that was turned down and at this one, he stated that he's there improve or having that in there. But on the Town of Petroleum website, I downloaded Table A and I printed out Table A. It already says 10.5 meters. Yet for a, sem a semi-detached and a single detached, it's only 7.5 meters. If you're throwing these under a residential three, why do these not have to have the same rear yardage as what all the others in a residential three have to have? So your worship, there will be two uh, zones that are created. There's R3-7, as you said, site-specific, and R1-8, as you said, site-specific. So the R1-8 is for the two single detached homes and the change there 
the dash eight was the change was that the frontage does not have to be as large as normal and only has to be 12. It does not mention the rear yardage at all. I think if I remember correctly, the planner did state where it butts up to homes, there would be that extra uh, distance. So there was more distance. Is that, that's my understanding of that. Uh, no, only for the townhouses. I asked this planner that and the planner said that he thought it was seven, he was not 100% sure, yeah. which is why I downloaded and it's actually 7.5. So why is a semi-detached in a residential three being allowed to have only 7.5 rear yardage when everything else in a residential three has 10.5? I can't answer that without the planner being present. And that would actually come part as a subdivision agreement and draft plan. There is no uh, plan with an outline for approval or before, before the planner. Okay. Again, that's all something we'll deal with on the draft plan. But in the original application, the town flat out put in there that they told the developer he was not allowed to have less than 10.5 rear yardage. Can that be added to this one as well? I can read the, um, uh, the clause if you wish your worship. The, ahead, the clause under R3-7 with the um, site specific uh, item number two is the townhouse dwelling or freehold, freehold townhouse dwelling shall be subject to the regulations of the townhouse dwellings in freehold townhouse dwellings set out in table A. However, a townhouse dwelling or freehold townhouse dwelling must be located at a minimum setback of 10.5 meters from any rear lot line of a property that is zoned R1. Yes, so it doesn't mention the semi-detached. Now I'm specifically asking about the semi-detached that if you're going to throw the semi-detached in a residential th three, then it should also have to meet the requirements of a residential three, which is a minimum of 10.5 rear yardage. And you can add that in there to this amendment because it was in the initial one that was turned down. I think all I can comment is we have the bylaw before us tonight. The council will debate tonight, and it'll be their option if they want to make changes or different changes than what the planner has recommended. But I can only, I mean, what was read was read. That's what the uh, that's what's before council tonight for discussion. Yes, I know, but from my understanding, council has the option to change it and make exceptions in there and put flat it in there. So that's what I'm asking is that if you're going to put semi-detached in a residential three, then it should meet all the requirements of a residential three, which is 10.5 meters. Um, I also have a question for why at the information session, was it not explained to the residents that you're doing that, that you're combining residential two with residential three? Why was that not explained? We're not town planners. We didn't go to school for this. We didn't, don't spend our days writing reports and understanding and reading. I've read more bylaws in the last weeks than I ever wanted to read in my life. And I still don't understand half of it. Sure. Why in an information session to the residents is things like this not explained? I think uh, the planner explained it to the best of his ability. I think, um, and again, you can look things up, but when it's a site specific, just to compare that, you're not gonna find that uh, anywhere because it was a specific zone just for that. Yes, and site specific was also not explained to the residents. Well, I, again, I can't speak for the planner, but I think he tried to communicate. That's why we have a public meeting to try and communicate these changes. And then if the people have any questions, the time is to ask the planner that while he's here. But I certainly can't, to say that I, I think or explain that I think it's up to council they will debate this tonight and it's it's their decision so then my question is going to be to council to postpone it so that us residents can get that more information because the planner's report was was quite conclusive but the plan the planner's report he mentioned provincial policy statements section 1.1.3 and section 1.13.6 and all those things so I ended up having to print out the provincial policy statements just to figure out what that's all talking about. Um, and it's funny that he included all the sections that fit in with new development and mixed development. Yet there are some other sections in the provincial planning statement that was not referenced. And I just wonder why. So section 1.1.1C, avoiding development in land use patterns which may cause environmental or public health and safety concerns. And I think our concerns, very valid concerns about the drainage and the effects change in the amount of homes due to the change in type of homes proposed would qualify as environmental or public health and safety concerns. Section 1.132D, 
prepare for the impacts of the climate change? How does severely increasing the saturation rate and recovery rate of what will remain open land within this 10 acre property prepare the increase in severe weather, increase in significant rainfall? Section 1.4.3 talks about an appropriate range and mix of housings. However, it also states all housing options required to meet the social, health, economic, and well being requirements of current and future residents. Very specifically says current residents. I think every single resident that's been here to any of the meetings has explained to you how they feel that this change is not positively affecting our well being. And I could keep going on. But one of the things I'd also like to know is at the beginning of the meeting, you shocked us all. Every single resident here was shocked because you read a letter and Ms. Pearson read a letter about how we were not allowed to talk about drainage, which literally was read five minutes before I went to speak. First notification I had that I was not allowed to talk about drainage. And my question is why that was done. Where did those letters come from? I think the concern was the public meeting was for the rezoning only. It's not a draft plan or a plan of subdivision. Mm -hmm. So we're only dealing with the rezoning aspect. The drainage, as I stated before, will be dealt with at a public meeting for the draft plan of subdivision. So where so did the letters come from that you read in this Pearson read? Who wrote those? Did it come from you? Did it come yes, from the it, developer? It came from, so it came from the town? Yes. Okay. So provincial policy statement section 1.6.6, .6, sewage water and stormwater. Section 1.6.6.1 is planning for sewage and water services shall, and it, a number D states, integrate servicing and land use considerations at all stages of the planning process. Now that's for sewage and water service, but under section 1.6.6.7 planning for stormwater management, it states, and under A, be integrated with planning for sewage and water services and ensure that systems are optimized, feasible, and financially viable over the long term. So under the provincial policy, which Ms. Pearson said, the provincial policy is what protects current residents. That's what we have to go under. Storm water management is to be integrated with sewage and water services, which are to be considered at all stages of planning. So is a bylaw amendment not one of the first steps in the planning process? You'll have to talk to the planner, but my understanding is no. The, the zoning, getting into the sewer use and storm water uh, is, is a different, opportunity than just rezoning this is just to be for rezoning so a rezoning I know it, is not part of planning so your worship i might be able to help you if you sure go ahead so you are correct in in um you're both correct there's if the land was deemed um open space or protected or environmental protection then yes all those considerations from the pps would come into play at that consideration level including the ones that you mentioned before um with the pps uh why would that initial level of communication. The PPS speaks to that when you're zoning something that is not residential. Actually, this, I took this out of the section about residential. This this is, that's taking something that was becoming residential, was previously not residential and is becoming residential, such as open space or environmentally protected lands. This was already zoned residential in whole, has been for, I forget how many years, but it has always been, zoned a level of residential okay so how are we supposed to know all this because we literally came to the information session and got told we're not allowed to talk about this done go ahead two minutes later go ahead and talk so how is that an information session how are we to know what questions to ask the planner when we're told essentially two minutes beforehand you can't talk about this i think that from the previous meeting we got into drainage an awful lot and we probably Absolutely. shouldn't have which given me the impression that we were allowed to talk about it Okay. Right. Um, then I went to the town of Petrolia official plan. I also printed that out. I've spent a lot of time printing and killed a bunch of trees in the last couple of weeks. Um, the pr the pl um, planner mentioned section 7.1.3 was quoted. So it, which talked about that, um, that was when he was talking about cul-de-sacs were placed within the proposal. And the proposal was amended and includes semi-detached. So clearly the residents next to this proposed development and will be affected by it most have indicated that this is a very undesirable use and type of development. So my question, section 7.1.3, I will read the quote, to conserve the housing stock and character of existing residential areas and to prevent encroachment of undesirable uses and types of development. 
That's your own town official plan. That's what it says. So who does that reference? Who gets to decide which is an undesirable use and type of development? The people that live there? Because everybody that lives there and that's spoken has said this is undesirable. The planner isn't here to speak to that, but I think the planner would have considered that in his report. Oh, so he, he, he read that in his report. He read that section, but he read the first part of the section that talked about a mix of houses. He didn't get into the second part where it talked about undesirable uses and types of development. Sure. So, and I also have a question about residential density because the current area is residential low density. Um, I also read up on what it now is a residential acre, which from my understanding, a low density can have a maximum of eight units per residential acre. If you add up the two single homes, you add up the semi-detached homes and you add up the now 76 townhouse units and you divide it by the 10 acres, you now get 8.6 houses per residential acre, which means, correct me if I'm wrong, it now has to be deemed medium density and no longer low density. The planner would have to address that. And those are all items that are also at when you have application for subdivision. There is no application for definitive to comment on. So those are all things that the, uh, the I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. Those are all things that the authority, the planning authority and the, um, the county as our authority would review before making recommendation to council. Okay. Thank but you. the zoning bylaw change allowing the townhouses, which we're talking about the zoning bylaw and the types of houses, Nowhere was it stated at the information session that because of the change in the bylaw that you're trying to put through, that the density of the, of the area would be changed, that it would be changed from a low density to a medium density. Why was that information not given to us at the information session? That specifically talks about the types of houses, which according to you is what the information session was about. Again, I think there are questions the planner um, probably dealt with, but I can't speak for the he planner at this time. Density at all. Okay. Nowhere in his report was density talked about. So given that there clearly is so many questions and so many inf much information not brought forward to the residents, not given to the residents at the information session, I'm going to request that council not vote on this amendment. No, I, I understand you're not going to turn it down. And I know eventually this is going to pass. We just want the information first. And clearly there's a lot of information that we want we don't need because according to your official plan, if this is now a medium density, then you need to have a site plan control. So I'd like to know if that's gonna happen. And does that not need to be included in this bylaw amendment? Because in a site plan control, it also talks about section 17.4, amenity and design, buffering and screening that the new residential area is developed adjacent to any other land use designation, which a low density counts, which, so that includes low density residents, such as the current homes on third and fourth, then the developer's supposed to provide buffering and screening between his development and ours. Is I'll that ask, not supposed to be part of the bylaw amendment? I'll ask Mrs. Pearson to address some of that, please. Perfect, so uh, site plan control, is actually when it's single property that is not a subdivision. Um, site plan control has already happened in your neighborhood uh, through deeming bylaws where other residents have wanted to build a larger property on two, on two lots. Those are site plan control elements. My when you have it, I'm sorry? My understanding that also when it's Just a second, let, let her, no, excuse me, let her finish, please. Go ahead. Site plan control comes from individuals. Site plan control of a subdivision comes through an application, which goes through the planning authority as the approval authority. They're not a single site specific control, it is a control of the entire site as a development. So from my understanding, that also comes in the case when you're changing from a low density, which it currently is based on the current bylaw to a medium density, which you're changing it to by changing the bylaw by changing it to residential three with all the extras added in there. Again, those items are covered when draft plan of subdivision is applied for. And there's also a public information where you can speak to the density of the subdivision at that time. Those are items that are dealt with at draft plan of subdivision. And when the subdivision agreement is presented to council. I really wish at the start of all this, which one of my fellow residents said, I wish at the start of all this, the information session, instead of 
it being what it was, people just sat down with us and explained the entire process properly. Because you know who I've gotten the most information from the process from? The reporter over there that I know you guys are not fond of. She took the time to send me an email that was almost a page and a half long, explaining to me as in a lot more detail the actual process. That's where I've gotten most of my information from. So this needs to improve with the town. The explanation to residents needs to improve. But I'm gonna again ask, clearly there's a lot of information we don't have. So please do not vote on this tonight. I'm not asking you to turn it down. I know you're not gonna turn it down. I know you want that to be residential three, but I'm asking you to wait and give us more information first. Thank you for coming to address council. Anyone else wishing to address council? Okay, Linda, come on forward. Linda Bader, 4427 3rd Street. We're not against the subdivision. We're against two-story townhouses. So just think about that. There's already, um, let me just read off of the, I believe it's the Lambton County report. The subject lands are currently vacant and are located in an area where several other plans of subdivisions are proposed. It is expected that these subdivisions will be primarily composed of individual lots uh, for single detached dwellings. That's what we're asking for. Even this uh, single floor story, whatever you want to call it, townhouses are very nice to look at. But you go anywhere and look at the two-story ones, they're slummy. No matter what city you go in, people do not take care of them. So, and besides that, there's already a planned development uh, of townhouses on the east side of Eureka Street. There's a great big sign up there. Why do we have to have them in our new subdivision? There isn't any in any other subdivision, so why ours? Thank you for coming to address council. Okay, anyone else wishing to address council? Okay. Uh, Christy, I live at 464th Street. Um, I won't be able to uh, speak as eloquently as my two neighbors did, so forgive me. And I'm just going to read off of my phone if that's okay. Um, sorry, Holmes. sorry, Christy, Is before you get going. No, I just need your last name if I can. Right. Thank you. Uh, townhomes, as we know, are often high structures, as was just stated, with multiple stories and high roof lines. These structures would obviously sit on slightly elevated land for proper drainage, and uh, the more expensive and elaborate a home design is, the higher they usually go to increase square footage for the uh, homeowner. We have been told repeatedly that the townhomes will be in keeping with our neighborhood. However, Forest Street, for the most part, is all single-story dwellings. The majority of homes along 4th and 3rd are single-story homes and many do not have trees in their backyards because of the age of our homes. They're fairly new, uh, a lot of them, and the open view of the field and forest and for the fact that the water drainage from the field rots the roots of a tree, as one of our neighbors can uh, speak to. Um, the water also uh, has rotted many fences. If you walk along the back line of uh, all those properties on 4th Street, you'll see a lot of fences being held up by posts. It also has rot rotted lawns, sheds, and garden beds. Many of us don't have fences because we have, needed, because we have not needed them uh, or because of rot has destroyed them. So these townhomes would be massive structures that would be eyesores, for one. Uh, they would obstruct our view, of course, uh, but they would obstruct sunlight. Uh, second story townhomes would be an invasion of our privacy to some degree because we don't have fences along the back of our properties and uh, we are only single story homes. What I find fascinating is that the second half of the development for later on, uh, on the south end of that property, uh, has no plans, according to what I think I heard properly last week, for townhomes backing onto First Street. Um, perhaps townhomes would be more suited for that section where there are many multi-storied homes. Initially, we were told that uh, there would only be around 60 townhomes, and now there are approximately 70 some that are being planned for this small parcel of land. With that will come more traffic beyond what a subdivision of single detached homes would bring. 
it will mostly certainly bring more noise and an increase of at least, I don't know, I'm gonna throw a number out there, 200 people, if two to three people live in each of those townhomes. My sister lives in a townhome community. Uh, she has the end unit of a fairly large structure. Her neighborhood has many, many issues. The streets are not wide enough because the developer wanted to pack more homes in. The driveways and the garages are too small for a modern family today that has at least two vehicles. And around here, there are a lot of vehicles that are trucks, which are very large and take up a lot of space. Uh, the noise pollution on some days in her neighborhood is, uh, is steady uh, from traffic and neighborhood dogs. Finally, um, at last week's council meeting, we were told that we could not discuss the drainage issue. Again, here it is, uh, because it would be discussed at a later date, as you just said, with a plan uh, devised through the developer. And I know that you're all frustrated with our relentlessness on this topic um, and our desire to talk about it. Um, and we do so because it is an issue that's been ongoing for many of, our, many of us here and many of us who are not here tonight. We are living it and you are not. We need to know that this planned community of townhomes or single detached or semi detached or whatever it is that is uh, going to be put on that property does address drainage for each and every one of us. It is relevant at this time before final plans are drafted when we have even less of a chance to be heard. Once you approve the zoning, there will be no stopping of that development even though you say there will be opportunity. This is our best chance now to pause that conversation to ensure drainage is addressed, to ensure that we have privacy to ensure we don't have to spend thousands of dollars to build new fences, to ensure we are not on the line for the mistakes of past landowners, past developers, past engineers, past surveyors, past town councillors, or past mayors. Simply making promises at this point isn't acceptable to us. In 2018, myself, my husband, and my neighbor, we came to multiple town council meetings to hear what was being done to address the drainage problem for Fourth and Third Street. I sent and showed pictures to a council member and others in this room of our backyard that clearly demonstrated a huge and major drainage issue stemming from the field. We had the former owner of the land come to discuss the problem. We had an engineer, we had Mr. Thompson, who sorry isn't here tonight, uh, and one of the town workers. I also sought legal advice. The former owner told us that the field was not properly tiled. He admitted it to us. He acknowledged that the field was draining onto our properties, but, he didn't care at that point because he planned uh, to sell the property to the best bid. We reached out to the home builder who refused to speak with us on the topic. The engineer who came agreed that there was a problem and that it goes back to before those homes were developed. The lawyer said we had a valid and winnable case and if our neighbors wanted, we had potential class action suit. But I obviously did not bring that up to my neighbors because that's not something that we wanted to do. The town then promised a drainage solution that addressed our lot back in 2019. We saw a map that highlighted, I hope I got the year right, I apologize if I didn't. We saw a map that highlighted the back of our property as a high point of concern. We were told that a pond near the golf course was going to be made deeper to collect more water to address the issue for first street first. Then nothing seemed to happen with ours and perhaps that is COVID to blame. Now developers come along and purchase the land to build homes on top of a field whether they be townhomes or single detached, uh, to build homes on a field that still drains into our backyards. And the town keeps shutting down the drainage conversation because it will be discussed at a lot later date, a message that we heard back in 2018. And that is why so many of us are upset, is that this conversation is not a new conversation. It is a very old conversation. And I suspect it is even older than 2018 before I even came to Petrolia. Um, so, no to townhomes because of so many other so many issues and yes drainage is part of that conversation when we talk about development on land regardless if it's a townhome or a semi-detached thank you thank you for coming to address council anyone else wishing to address council please state your name and address please heather wright 435 greenfield street I just wanted to let you know that we have not had our no parking signs reinstated on Greenfield. And this evening, if you drove by my house, you'd see someone parked backwards on the wrong side of the road. So maybe we could get that fixed. Thanks. Okay, so noted, thank you. And we will look into that, thank you. Anyone else wishing to address council? 
Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. So we've got on our financial accounts report, we have a, a, um, a report with the accounts listed on it. I'll ask for a move and a second to put that motion on the floor for discussion, please. I need a councillor move and a second move by Councillor Sutch, seconded by Councillor O'Hara. Any discussion regarding those financial accounts listed? Councillor O'Hara, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I was in and went through the accounts and I was satisfied with them. Thank you, Councillor O'Hara. Okay, if there's no more questions, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of approving the accounts? Opposed? That motion passes. Item 14A, Your Worship. Thank you. 14, we have uh, from the operations, a report from Mr. Mike Thompson, Director of Operations regarding a preliminary engineering on Tank Street and Garden Crescent reconstruction. And there's a motion before you, if uh, you'd like to, I'd like to ask for a move and a second to put that on for discussion. Moved by Councillor Welton, seconded by Councillor Dighton. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion before we open it up for discussion, please. And that is the Council of the Town of Petrolia received the report of the Director of Operations dated July 11, 2022, regarding preliminary design for reconstruction of Tank Street and Garden Crescent projects, and that Mandy Pearson, Clerk Operations Clerk, be authorized to sign the Municipal Engineering Agreement, known as the MEA. Thank you. Um, Mr. Charlebois, do you have anything you'd like to add? Because I see Mr. Thompson is not present tonight. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, through you, Your Worship. Um, so on Tank Street, uh, Council uh, have read that it's all the different parts of the whole road reconstruction that that our engineer helped us with. And um, on the other one, Garden Crescent, it's just the first part of the. Oops, it's just the first. Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. The uh, so Tank Street's all three parts that we need to do a road reconstruction, and Garden Crescent is just the preliminary engineering work um, as council may or not may not be aware uh, the street is a cement street and it's uh it's shifting all the time we've had several complaints on it uh, so we want to do the initial engineering on it uh, just see where we can fit it into our long-term plan okay. thank, thank you mr. thank you mr charlebaugh any questions from council councillor dighton not so much a question, just a comment. Uh, great to see that we're looking at uh, Tank Street. It's been a, an eyesore for a very long time, um, you know, especially considering it's the artery to our YMCA and, uh, and the community center there. Uh, also to garden uh, the shocks of my vehicles, uh, all can complain and contest that that is, uh, needs to be looked at. So I appreciate them going forward with that and at least getting this in the engineering stages and, you know, be like, happy to see that we're, we're doing some work there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dighton. I think we're looking at somewhere approximately $76,000 plus HST. Councillor O'Hara. On Tank Street, would that, we're gonna do engineering that will allow us for development down there then? Mr. Charlebois, go ahead. Uh, not um, currently. The water and there's ditches for the storm sewer. Uh, we do that and do a couple cross, uh, I think there's like four or five cross road um, under the road there. But the, there's no water, I'm sorry, there's no uh, sanitary sewer past the community center going towards um, Discovery. So we wouldn't be looking at that? Uh, no. If we needed, if there was enough development happening on, on Tank Street, on that end of Tank Street, uh, then we'd uh, look at putting it in. Right now, it's not needed. Do we need a pumping station there? Uh, sorry, um, Councillor, I can't uh, remember about a pumping station. Not sure. Because I know a couple of our uh, industries at the end are still on septics. Yes. And it would be nice yep. to be able to get them onto uh, sanitary sewers. Yep. Th that's a good point, uh, Council O'Hara, because I know the, 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 you know, at the end of the street, they were looking at, uh, you know, additional development if the sewers were there. Uh, maybe that's something we could consider, but it would have to be worthwhile because um, you'd be going quite a distance where we would have nothing at all. So it's something that this council could consider, but there would certainly be an additional cost to look at that. Maybe we get a report back on that. Sure. Uh, yes. Um, uh, Your Worship, I was going to say it's may maybe during the, at least for Tank Street and the preliminary engineering, we could ask for them to look at putting in sanitary sewer, just get a rough ballpark cost and uh, how much that would be. 
Thank you, Mr. Schaller, but I think that would be a good idea. So uh, that's uh, that's something yeah. we should take take a look at. All right, any other questions regarding that motion on the floor? If not, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of approving that motion? Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. That brings us to administration. We have a report from Mrs. Mandy Pearson, Clerk Operations Clerk, regarding finalization of Community Safety Wellbeing Plan. I'll ask for a move and a second to put that motion on the floor for discussion. Moved by Councillor Dighton, seconded by Councillor Welton. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. And that is for the Council of the Town of Petrolia to receive and file the report of the clerk operations clerk dated July 11th, 2022, regarding the Lambton County Community Safety Wellbeing Plan. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. And that was quite detailed and I council all had a copy. I hope you've gone through all of that. Any questions regarding that? If not, all those in favor of approving that. Opposed, that motion carries. That will bring us to the second opportunity for the public to address council. Is there anyone wishing to address council at this time? Um, from my understanding, you mentioned that there was going to be possibly some soccer fields put on the other side of the YMCA. When you're looking at Tang Street, are you automatically going to look at putting in sidewalks and stuff there too? If you're going to be building soccer fields later on? and potentially needing to put another additional parking lot. Is that also going to be included in your thing looking at Tang Street? Like you might as well put that into the cost estimate at the same time. Mr. Charlotte, why would you like to address that please? Uh, yes, Cur currently we weren't looking at putting in um, sidewalks. Like uh, I see your point is even if it went to the end of the soccer field or something, is that, that what you're suggesting? I'm talking about it because yeah. if you're going to be pulling up Tang Street, yeah. You might as well look at putting that small section of sidewalk yes. in at the same time. Yeah, we were going to look at like widening the road a bit so cars could park along there and then have a path across to the soccer fields. Um, and but I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Mr. Thompson about looking at even just a partial sidewalk or something. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Else to address council at this time? If not, Moving on, we have new and unfinished business. And I think the clerk reported that that uh, notice of motion will go to our next council meeting. So we will not be dealing with that. I will ask council, is there any other new or unfinished business to come before council at this time? If not, we'll move forward to the bylaws. I'll ask for a motion to approve the bylaws a first and second time. I'll need a move and a second to move by Councillor Welton. Seconded by Councillor O'Hara. Any discussion regarding the first and second reading of those bylaws? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the second reading? Okay, thank you. And I'll need a motion to approve the bylaws a third and final time and will be read. I'll need a move and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Dighton, seconded by Councillor Welton. And I'll ask the clerk to read those bylaws, please. Thank you, Worship, and that is bylaw number 34 of 2022, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the Town of Petrolia to appoint councillors and ratepayers to various duties, be read a third time and finally passed. That bylaw number 35 of 2022, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the Town of Petrolia to enter into an agreement with Her Majesty, the Queen and Right of Ontario, hereby represented by the Minister responsible for infrastructure and the Corporation of the Town of Petrolia to receive funding through the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, ISIP, Green Stream Project, Brightsboro Water Treatment Plant Intake, Replacement, be read a third time and finally passed. That bylaw number 36 of 2022, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the Town of Petrolia to amend bylaw 63 of 2017, Petrolia Sky Estates, be read a third time and finally passed. And that bylaw number 37 of 2022, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the Town of Petrolia to confirm the resolutions and motions of the Council of the Town of Petrolia, which were adopted up to and including July 11, 2022, be read a third time and finally passed. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. Any question regarding those bylaws? Councillor Dighton. I'd like to address bylaw 36 2022. Um, I know that's the elephant in the room here. Uh, sorry, I turned my mic on so the people at home can hear me. Um, uh, I realize that that's the elephant in the room um, to let the residents know you've been heard. We do understand that, uh, that, that there's some concern with regards to this uh, subdivision. Um, I believe that uh, everything that I've read and that I understand of the, the way that the process works 
that the drainage and all the issues and, and even if it's high density, low density will be addressed at the plan of subdivision, not at the plan of actual residence, uh, residential one, residential three. So you have been heard and we will be looking for those things to be, uh, to be addressed in the plan of subdivision at that time. Um, so that's just wanted you to hear it from our mouths. Thank you, Councillor Dighton. I just wanted to add one thing too, that um, when it gets to the next stage for the uh, public meeting, council still has the option and you do too, council can still say no to this proposal. So this is not a done deal at this point. This is just the rezoning that's taking place tonight. Thank you. Any other comments from council? Councillor Such. I would just like to say that, you know, all your concerns have been heard. I have taken it all very seriously. All we have done is change the zoning. When it comes to a planned subdivision, it's basically starting not over, but all your concerns from a two story, three story, four story is all going to be heard and it's all got to be done. And you know what? Draining's got to be done. Setbacks, that's all part of the plan subdivision. You have been heard. And, and you know what? I, I'm going to take your concerns and make sure they're all addressed. I promise you that. No, just a sec, sorry. Yep. Go ahead, Councilor Sutz. Are you finished then? And, and, and I hope the people that, good point. But you know what? I, I hope the people going forward with the plan subdivision has heard you know, everything that's taken place. Thank you, Councillor Such. Any other questions from Council or comments? If not, I'm going to call the vote. All, oh, sorry. Mr. Charlebaugh, go ahead. Your Worship. Um, just want to suggest is if the people that spoke tonight about um, the subdivision at Petroleum Sky, if you want to feed the town your comments, I get it is the, sort of the wrong stage, but it's better to start earlier than later, just so we have your comments so that our, our town planner can start working on them. Plus also, I would suggest to feed it to the developer through the engineers, probably the best bet. Uh, Ray Dobbin is the engineer. I apologize, Mr. CAO. Unfortunately, through the Planning Act, those comments must be followed and received through the process as if there was an appeal. It must be documented through the public meeting process. Okay, Correct. sorry about that. Save your comments, I guess, till the next public meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. Okay, I'll ask you. Oh, Councillor Purdy, go ahead. Uh, I just echo the other councillors. I, I take it very seriously as well. And some of these, some of these hearing, some of the legislation and stuff is 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 provincially controlled, correct? And I agree that it needs to change. There needs to be definitely be change. And uh, I don't know how we would go about doing that, but I, I certainly agree. I think that the process does get a bit convoluted, gets confusing, especially for us who don't know you know the lingo we didn't go to school for it so i definitely agree and i think if there's any way that we can work on addressing a change at that level i'm not sure how we do it but i'm all for it thank you council purdy and again that's why we we hire the professional planner from the county to give us that direction and to make changes necessary all right i'll ask one more time any other comments or questions from council if not i'll call the vote all those in favor of approving those bylaws opposed that motion carries. Thank you. And I'll ask for a motion to adjourn to September the 12th. I'll ask for move, move by Councillor Dighton, seconded by Councillor Purdy. I'll ask the clerk to read that motion, please. And that is that the July 11th, 2022 meeting of the Council of the Town of Petrolia be adjourned to the next regular scheduled meeting of council to be held on Monday, September the 12th, 2022, or to call the chair. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. All those in favor? Opposed, that motion carries. Thank you everyone for coming.